Welcome back. We're here today with Mr. Josh, and he's with the Indiana DNR. You finally made it in. I did, yeah. Uh, it's been a little while. We've been trying to get this put together, and yeah, here we, we are. We finally got it, though. Yeah. This is good. We're going to go with it today. So, And we're wondering today is, there's a thing going to be happening with the Hunter's Education. Can you tell us when those are and who needs to take them? Yeah, so um, Hunter Education has been taught for a long, long time in Indiana and throughout the nation. Um, in Indiana, you have to have a hunter education card to purchase a hunting license if you were born after 1986. Mm -hmm. um, the exception to that is you, before, you ha before you have to have the hunter ed, you can have what we call three apprentice licenses. Uh, what that does is allow you to kind of get involved in the culture, get to understanding if, you, if this is your thing or not. And at that point, then you'll you, you know, take a hunter education course to buy your next license. Right. Um, there's no age restriction on that. Um, you can do an apprentice license if you were, you know, if you're a 30 year old and, and still have to have that, that hunter education card. People don't hunt like they used to. Yeah. So the kids are not exposed to it. And if they can get that education, then it's a little more familiar. They understand the rules and the laws and it, it makes it better for everybody when they go out to hunt or fish. Yeah. Yeah. I think in today's world of technology, uh, Kids just aren't outside. Um, right. They're not waiting until the till mom's porch light comes on to, to get back in the house. They're in the house. That's what we did. You know, right? <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, it's a 10-hour course. You have, to, you have to be there for the 10 hours. And at the end, you take a test. And um, when you when you pass, we, we give you a, a credit card-looking Hunter Education Certificate. There's no money on it. But right. uh, you have that card. It's good for, for the entire nation. Uh, so if you decide you want to go to Colorado and elk hunt, You've got your hunter education card. Oh, neat! So it's uh, pretty cool. A pretty cool thing. Um, yeah. So that's uh, if you want to sign up for that. The best way to do that's online. So if you go to uh, www.passitonindiana.com, all one word, passitonindiana.com, uh, click on the traditional course, and then click on Madison's area code. Or typically, if you're somewhere in the in the whereabouts, it'll it'll link you directly to that course. Now, we, there's some new laws coming out. With the, Everybody needs to understand that every year things can change with the way yeah. the, the laws are with the DNR, so they need to check stuff. And one of them is the saugers this year. What's different about those? Yeah, so um, in, in the Ohio River particularly, yes. uh, Indiana already has, um, has a bag limit and a length limit on sauger. Uh, the Ohio River's traditionally been you can keep 10 fish a day with no size limit. Uh, well, what happens there is, is everybody keeps those fish because they are some delicious eating fish, right? Sauger and walleyes. I don't let too many of those leave the leave the hook and don't go in my life well, right? <laughs> so, uh, what's happening is we is we really want to see that that fishery thrive, right? And uh, so, what's happened as of January nineteenth is uh, there's a new law on the Ohio River that for sauger uh, you can keep six a day. And uh, they've got to be at least 14 inches or longer. Now that's in aggregate, meaning um, that's a combination of sauger, walleye, or sawgai, or, or a hybrid walleye. Uh, right. Those three fish together, you can keep six a day. Um, so in 14 inch minimum uh, length. Uh, some people might not like that, but it's going to make it's going to do some really great things for that river. It'll fishery. increase the population. Yeah, for of sure. The fish. And we'll start to see some size on those fish. Well, that's good. Yeah, because the bigger they are, the better the fillet. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's that's a good thing. Right. Yeah. Well, let's hope they don't complain too much. Nah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah you know, nobody likes change, but no. this is a good one. Good, good. Yeah. Now we've got some things coming up, with boating and all that getting ready to happen. Spring's getting here. Mm -hmm. Some people may not be used to boating, may not realize some of the laws that it, they need to follow. Right. So, what are some of the laws with the boating? Yeah. So. Uh, we could probably spend oh, we the could. next hour doing this, right? <laughs> we could, but uh, we're just doing the basics. So sure. So if you're new to boating or not even new, just want to freshen up on on the laws and the kind of the rules of the road, we call it. Right. Uh, pick yourself up one of these books right here. Uh, it's uh, it's Indiana's boating laws and responsibilities. Just a little handbook. Um, any of the conservation officers you bump into will have those. Oh, neat. Um, if not, you can call our district post or call um, you know, Indianapolis and they have these available to you. These are great. They've, they've got uh, just basically your responsibilities as an operator on a boat, um, as kind of the captain, so to speak, right? right. You're, you're typically in charge of everybody. Um, but it just good tips on how to be safe and, and how to stay legal. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, we go on and on about this. Uh, some of the basics, um, lighting. 
lighting becomes an issue. With yeah, I've the, noticed that sometimes they're not always the yeah, way they should be. And, and typically electricity and water don't don't work out. <laughs> so uh, it's no different with your boat. A lot of times, uh, you you know, you have boat lights that 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 fade out or that uh, burn out or, or whatever. Now, what are the basic lights that they they have to have on a boat? So from sunset to sunrise, right? Um, they've got to have a series of lights now on the front or the bow. Um, on the left hand side is going to be like your port side and that's going to have to be, a, there's going to be after a, red, a red light there. On your starboard side which is your right hand side is a green light so so you've got red and green uh, just like the stop lights you see it you know on the street right. and on the back on the stern of the boat it's a, there's got to be a 360 degree white light all the way around so that you can you can see everybody out there. Um, Again, if you haven't taken a boat or ed course, you don't have to to operate a boat in Indiana. It's a really good idea. Um, there are what we call rules of the roadway, how to pass, which way, which side of the boat to pass on, right. uh, who has the right of way, who does not. There's all kinds of things you can learn. Um, but pick yourself up a copy of that book yeah. or look online on the same, same website and find a, a boat or education course. Um, so for the big things for Indiana waters, now <clears throat> what you have to remember on the Ohio River is that we share jurisdiction, or we, you know, we call it concurrent That's jurisdiction. That's a big confusion there with both sides. Yeah. Not, yeah. not you all, but the people that are in the boats or fishing. That's or, right, yeah. Whatever. So on the main body of the Ohio River, um, there's all kinds of enforcement agencies out there. There's the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife, there's us, the Indiana Conservation Officers, and there's also the Coast, U.S. Coast Guard and federal agencies that, that regulate those waterways. Right. Um, so speaking on from the Indiana side, and like I said, on on waters of concurrent jurisdiction, um, there's all kinds of things as far as like fire hydrants, uh, signaling devices, things of that nature. Right. For us, we're looking for a life jacket that fits every single person on that boat, mm -hmm. um, and that has to be fitted to them. It can't be, uh, right. you know, if a person my size, and that life jacket counts for a two-year-old. It, it's just not going to work that way. Uh, those life jackets have to be have to be accessible, so they can't be in a lock box or still in the plastic underneath a, a seat, something like that. They need to be accessible to those that that may need them. Uh, so a life jacket for every person, um, and then if the boat's 16 inch, 16 feet, not inches, 16 feet or bigger, then it has to have what we call a Type Four throwable cushion. It's kind of like a seat yes, cushion. Yeah. You have to have that on the boat, and that's because there's always wind with water. Mm -hmm. And if you try to throw a life jacket that fits on a body in wind, it's not going to get very far. <laughs> no. Right. It's going to hit you. Right. So, uh, so we're looking for life jackets. We're looking for a sober driver. Um, you can drink alcohol and and be the operator of a boat in Indiana, but once you reach that level of impairment or intoxication, then then you know, you're going to have right. yourself some trouble there. And, and that's different than Kentucky. It so is, yeah. That's, they need to remember that. Yeah, yeah, you need to look at the, the laws of concurrent jurisdiction, which is also yes. in this handbook yeah. manual. So every state, if you're going into another state, oh, yeah. other than what you're used to, you need to check. For sure, yeah. If, you, uh, if, if you're if you used to, to fishing in Indiana and maybe having a, a, an alcoholic beverage while you're, you're fishing, <laughs> you might be okay. If you go to Alabama, you might, you, not. You might find yourself in a... In a different kind of Airbnb. Right? That'd be an expensive trip, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that's right. it? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have expensive trips. Check it out before you go. Right, so, for sure. Well, now there's also water safety. Some of the yeah. things we need to kind of. Uh, you've already covered a few of them. Definitely, yeah. There, there's, a, there's, we could talk about water safety for hours too. Yes. We, um, unfortunately, we deal with drownings every year. Um, there's never been a year without one. Right. Um, I can tell you that I personally have never been involved with a drowning where the person was wearing a life jacket. Never once. Um, I wear one. I'm 39 years old. I, I wear one every day when I'm on boat patrol. Right. Um, especially the younger kids. Now on the Ohio River, if you're under 13 years old, you have to have one on by law uh, if the boat's in motion, if it's not moored right. up on a dock. Um, but just, just have those life jackets available. There's just no sense not to. Um, obviously, alcohol and drug use plays a huge factor in drownings. Right. Um, whether you're a, a, a certified lifeguard or a, a child that learned how to swim last year, um, alcohol and drugs right. do not mix with, with swimming and water. No. You know. Once you're impaired, you're impaired. doesn't matter who you are. That's right. It, yeah. And for whatever affect, reason, it just seems to... Affect your reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure. Um, we want to make sure they don't get too impaired about anything. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, another thing, check the weather. Yes. Uh, we all have smartphones now for the most part. Somebody has a smartphone in your clan. Yes. Uh, f 
check the weather out, see what right. it's going to do in two hours from Which now. Which we just had that incident today. We did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were thinking about going out in, in the weather, and we thought it was pretty to go do something different, and found out there was a tornado warning all of a sudden, <laughs> so we couldn't go outside. Yeah. But... Um. It's not it's not something you want to no. be out there and then realize you're going to have bad weather. And especially that river can get pretty wild pretty quick. <clears throat> yeah. Um, when the wind picks up and the white caps start blowing through or there's there's debris in the in the water, mm -hmm. it can turn hazardous fast. And that's always in the Ohio River. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I always check the uh, the the tables how how deep the water is where right. it is out on flood stage. Um, see what the weather's going to do four or five hours from now yeah because uh, if you get caught two or three or four miles away from your boat dock you could be in a lot of a lot of trouble <laughs> yeah you want to be back by the time your your right. time limit's done you don't want to be wondering if you're going to make it back yeah yeah so. um if you're skiing mm -hmm. if you're if you're you know pulling a tube or yes. skiing or something like that yeah uh, in indiana waters you have to have an observer now that observer needs to be observing, Being. <laughs> not reading the, the, the latest, the latest you know, Nora Jones book or whatever is out or there. Or playing on their cell phone. Playing on the cell phone. They need to be observing actively, right? right. Now on the Ohio River, uh, you just need to have a mirror where you can see that that person being towed. Uh, they always have to have life jackets on, no matter what. Right. But uh, that's a huge thing. I mean, if you get if you get complacent and, and somebody you know loses, you know they they get dumped over in yeah. a tube or something. Uh, they need to get you need to get to them right uh, well you don't know if they hit their head if there was debris in the water and they right. hit the debris or if they're injured yeah yeah, yeah. that's kind of yeah. like a quick reaction you need yeah. to turn around <laughs> right and then if you want to feel incredibly safe about things take one of our boater education courses right and uh, that just gives you the the, the know-how of you know how i pass what these channel buoys mean all kinds of different right. things are discussed in that uh, now you can't have that course and assume everybody else knows what you're talking or what what you know at that point right uh, there's a lot of boaters that just don't don't know oh uh, i know i've been on the boat ramp before and and people are saying oh well you can do that it's okay it's fine i'm, I'm like no it's yeah. not <laughs> yeah so i just kind of walk i'm to get away from yeah <laughs> and that's on all of us to know right. you know the rules of, of the water right. we're in or what we're about to get ourselves involved with um we didn't talk about registration no we didn't and that's the big one we were getting ready to yeah. do that one so what do we need to do to get our boats ready so we're not in trouble yeah. with that? So uh, with registration, you that's through the BMV. Yes. Um, if you purchase a boat today or uh, tomorrow, whenever you've got 45 days from that from that point of purchase to have um, an XI sticker and your your boat registered in your name. Right. Um, so you have to have. Uh, the boat numbers, and they're supposed to be block letters and, and you know, not, big enough to know, read. Big enough not, to read. <laughs> yeah, not the same color as your boat, so not <laughs> right. white on white or something like that, no. red on red. Right. Um, but it needs to be big block letters so we can see them and make sure they're you're in. in uh, and that's compliance. a lot like the airplanes. Airplanes have to have big letters that you can see from the you know from the, the ground. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So uh, get those registered um, in Indiana. You have to do it an, you know annually. You have to have that XI sticker done it annually. Uh, if you don't have it done yet, if, if you're within that 45-day window, have the uh, the, the uh, purchase of sale um, with you. With you, you have something, some kind of documentation yes. showing that you know, this is the date and yes. I'm still good to go here. Um, keep that boat registration in your boat. I didn't know that when I was a young little whippersnapper in high school, and it, it cost me a little bit. Oh so. goodness! <laughs> from guy in green, right? Well, so. but, but you learned from it. I did. Yeah, you learned from I did. It. Yeah. So. so keep that registration in there. In the boat. Uh, just like you do in your car. Just like you do in your car. That's right. Yeah, by law, you have to have it in the boat with you. Yes. It doesn't seem to, it seems kind of weird, a piece of paper that's going to get wet, but, I, you know, throw it in a Ziploc bag. and. That's what I would do. Yeah. Ziploc bagging. Yeah. Take it with me. But, yeah, get them registered. That's that's a pretty costly thing when right. when you're... And if they do it now, it's not like they're busy fishing and being out on the that's water. That's right. Yeah. So do it before you get busy on the water. Yeah, there's nothing else to do, right? right? It's cold right. and nasty, except for today. Yeah, well, it's pretty yeah. nice. <laughs> well, I don't know. We got tornado warnings, yeah. so <laughs> can't do what we want. Right. <laughs> so, but now, then there's some things, too. There are courses that you all offer, like there's a woman's course, um, Learning to Be an Outdoor Woman. Yeah. Those are coming up. It is. I can so, get you the dates maybe the next time we speak. But right. yeah, we're going to be, uh, th and that's a great, that's a great thing. Have you done that before? It is. No, I've been invited. Well, I've been hunting since I was three, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> but, I will say there's always something to learn at that There course. is, but I've been asked to go to cover it so okay. that I could show people and so we could get more women involved in it. Absolutely, you know? But yeah. it's a really cool course because they learn how to do, they learn how to use the bow, the gun, mm -hmm. all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff, fishing reels. Yeah. It's, it's not 
intimidating because everybody there is learning the same thing. That's right. Yeah. So it's wonderful. So I'll be I'll be there um, on the uh, the pistol long gun range, learning yes. how to shoot, kind of the basic, the, yeah. the 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 just a real basic course of how to shoot, how to be safe, and things yes. of that nature. Uh, but we will shoot quite a few rounds while we're there. Uh, there's an archery setup. There's even uh, a couple of the uh, the old uh, legends, Stevie D and Stevie Reinhold, a couple of the game wardens that uh, yes. we've had from that are retired now. They, right. they they usually come and teach uh, like Dutch oven cooking, oh, things of that nature. Yeah. So there's something to learn there, no matter no matter your skill set. Oh wow, yeah, that sounds cool. Well, well, we'll try to make it this year. You should, you should do. We that. can at least cover yeah. it, and that way show people what it's about. If they can see it, maybe they'll be more interested. Like, well, yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, do we have anything else we need to cover today? I know next time you're coming in, we're going to cover turkey hunting. Yeah, and yeah, that's coming getting up quick. closer. So, but do uh, we have anything else today? No, I think we're good. I, I think, think so. as the weather warms up, remember in Indiana, you have to have a fishing license. Uh, they expire March 31st. That that catches people off guard. April 1st, you have to have yes. a new license. And spring break is in there, so it is. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, don't miss. Yeah. So get your license now. Yeah, and you're you're covered. Awesome. Right, but yeah, get out and, and enjoy the outdoors. Like you said, we're just we're losing. Outdoors yeah. men and women by the by the droves. Yes, and uh, it's a sad thing because there's a lot to do. It is be, because uh, even with deer population, if it gets too big, then they get sick and we lose them. That's right. Yeah. So we really need to harvest some deer every mm -hmm. year to keep that population down so they stay healthy. Yeah, and that's a big reason why we're we're, we're doing the hunter educations, and right. uh, um, that's our goal is to to keep this culture alive right. uh, we all came from a hunting background you can argue that if you want but <laughs> I, think I don't we care did. where you came from yeah yep. and uh, we want to keep that alive we want to at least educate the public that this is this is a good thing yeah well, this is great well thanks yeah. for coming in today thanks for having me it's my I really, pleasure oh well we'll have you back so okay it'd be great good we really appreciate our sponsors who make all this possible and we thank you for watching <laughs>